All right, everybody, another year has come once again, and oh boy, this year had so many L's, even more so than last year. And of course, like last year, it didn't take me long to find as many L's as it did W's. And today, I will be listing the top 10 L's of 2021. This is going to be spicy. All right, let's get to... Number 10, Donald Trump. Coming in at number 10 is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Donald John Trump. Now look, I'm not putting Trump on this list because of any political bias. I do know that some of you are raising an eyebrow because I am a Kanye West supporter. But believe it or not, I do believe that Mr. Trump is a Sigma male. But I have to be fair. Anyways, on January 6th, a certain event that I am not allowed to mention occurred at our capital. This event, in my opinion, was just fucking stupid. And I think what's even more dumb was shit for brain check marks saying that this event was worse than a certain event that happened 20 years ago. But anyways, partly because of this event, Donald J. Trump got all of his social media accounts banned from YouTube to Instagram and most famously his Twitter, which I miss dearly because of his old tweets. But what makes this ban different from others is the fact that he was the president of the United States. And whenever this happened, everyone from left to right shat their pants. But yeah, sorry Mr. Trump, you have to go on the L list. Anyways, let's talk about... Number 9, Toy Animations. And at number 9, we have Toy Animations. For those of you who don't know, Toy Animations owns many franchises such as One Piece and Dragon Ball. Toy is on this list for unfairly taking down content creators videos. I will give two examples. The first and least known example is the takedown of a fan animation called Dragon Ball Deliverance. Yeah, you heard me a fan animation. Something that wasn't even made by anyone associated with Toy. So if you're planning on releasing Goku X Frieza with action figures, don't. The second and most recent and more known example is them taking down over 150 reviews by Totally Not Mark, which if you take a quick glance at his videos, he mostly doesn't show any footage whatsoever. All he shows in his footage are still images and clips not even 10 seconds long. This constitutes fair use, mind you. You know that Toy didn't even look at his videos because they took all those 150 videos down in a matter of minutes. It's abuse of the copyright system, which YouTube will never fix. And Toy Animations, if you're seeing this, I want you to know to SMFD, bitch. Okay, let's proceed with number eight, John Cena. Coming in at number eight is John Cena. Yes, I hate to say it, but John Cena took an L this year. Earlier this year, he gave an interview regarding one of the new Fast and Furious movies, which, in my opinion, is a melt cash cow. Anyways, during the interview, he had the audacity to call Taiwan a country. This, of course, didn't sit well with the CCP and Winnie the Pooh. So what they and the Hollywood media forced him to do was apologize on this app called Weibo, which is like Chinese Twitter from what I heard. Yeah, this just goes to show how the Western media is controlled by the Chinese government. This apology was only meant to be viewed by those in China, but some brave souls out there leaked this to everyone else in the world. And of course, this wasn't the only video of John Cena speaking Chinese. A whole plethora of videos showcased him speaking Chinese to the Chinese. This whole thing here is what sparked the social credit meme, just so you know. Anyways, before I get executed by the CCP, let's get on with... Number 7, 
Minecraft YouTubers. And at number seven, we have Minecraft YouTubers. They're on this list for being a bunch of knee bending cowards. They will apologize for anything their teenage stands find offensive. And I will list three examples. Example number one is a Minecraft YouTuber apologizing for using Native American music in his Manhunt series and for making a war cry, which I guess is a Native American exclusive now. Ah, uh, don't you just love Twitter? And of course, with him being a spineless coward, he typed up a couple thread apology and made a video apologizing since his stands are soft as fuck. Example number two is another Minecraft YouTuber who got called out by his soft ass stands for hanging out with Ice Poseidon a few years back and for watching him. Which, in case some of y'all don't know, Ice was a pretty offensive dude back in the day. And I'm pretty sure he's a changed man from what I heard. And by no surprise to no one, he bended the knee like the fucking coward he is and apologized. Luckily, Ice called him out on his bullshit. And the third and final example comes from the former YouTuber we talked about making this funny ass tweet. And with his stands being closeted racist, they found this tweet offensive because apparently, according to these woke zoomers, only black people do drugs and say, hey yo, turn that shit up. I mean, for Christ's sakes. He said Charles, which is a white ass name. And wouldn't you know, he apologized for it. My god, these Minecraft YouTubers are fucking pussies. Oh guys, sorry my sneeze offended 20 of you. Please forgive me, you're my money source. To these Minecraft YouTubers, I'm just gonna leave you with this message. Come on, have a set of fucking nuts. All right, enough talking about these folks. Let's proceed with number six, YouTube dislikes. Coming in at number six is the YouTube dislike system. The reason why it is on this list is because, well, practically, it's non-existent. Yes, earlier this year, YouTube announced they were thinking of removing the dislike counter from every single video on this website. Of course, 99% of people said that this was bullshit because it's now harder to detect garbage videos and scams. YouTube, of course being as open-minded as they are, decided to give us the middle finger and remove it despite the fact that a vast majority of us said no. So on November 10th, they released this video stating that dislikes are going bye bye and instead of an employee telling us this they hired some youtuber to show for them they state that this is to help small creators but we all know that is bullshit if that were the case then why must all channels have the dislike counter removed Huh? Answer me that. No, the reason why dislikes were removed is because corporations, Hollywood, politicians, and golden geese were complaining about it, which are YouTube's money makers. You just gotta love how they remove dislikes because it hurts people's feelings, but they won't fix the abusive content ID system, which actually affects content creators. Luckily though, there is an extension on Chromium browsers that bring back the dislikes. And though the dislikes aren't updated in real time, and even though the public dislike API will be gone by the time this video releases, it is better than nothing at all. Alright, let's get to... Number 5, Facebook. And at number 5, we have Facebook. Facebook is on this list for two reasons. Reason 1, they had Capcom censor the living hell out of Resident Evil 4 VR. I mean, for God's sakes, even all the cute flirtatious lines between Leon and Hunnigan are gone. I mean, who made this decision? Some lonely motherfucker who's jealous that they can't find someone to be affectionate towards them? I mean, good God. If you think that this censorship is bad, just wait until San Andreas VR comes out. The second reason why Facebook is on this list 
is because whistleblowers came out stating that Facebook feels negative discourse towards its viewers by showing them shit they don't like. They purposefully magnify hate and misinformation simply for money. You just gotta love this progressive activist facade these companies put on while being morally corrupt at the same time. And of course, much like the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, nothing is going to come out of this. All politicians are going to do is wag their finger at them since Facebook bribes, I mean, lobbies them. Anyways, let's proceed with... Number 4. Rockstar Take 2. Coming in at 4th place is both Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive. They are on this list for being greedy, shady, and overall, lazy. First of all, last year, Rockstar Games announced that they are releasing GTA 5 for the 5th time for PS5 and Xbox Series X. This is because GTA 5 is a cash cow that refuses to die. And thankfully, the community isn't happy with this, and this year, they released another trailer for the quote-unquote expanded and enhanced version, and it looks exactly the same as the last-gen version. And I am so glad that this trailer got dislike bombed, even though 80% of those disliking are probably gonna buy it. But this isn't the main reason why they aren't on this list. No, last month, Rockstar Games and Take-Two released Grand Theft Auto, the Trilogy Definitive Edition. And I must say that this isn't really definitive because, oh my god, there are so many bugs in these games. I mean, come on Rockstar, it's a damn remaster. How could you screw up so bad? Well, that's the problem. Rockstar didn't make it. They handed the project off to a small group called War Drum Studios, which are the same people behind the awful mobile ports. And luckily for me, I did not buy this because I had a feeling deep inside me that this was going to be hot trash. And I have four red flags that show this release to be a scam. Flag number one, War Drum Studios changing their name. Flag number two, Take 2, taking down graphic and map mods. Flag number 3, the removal of the original games. And flag number 4, refusing to show gameplay. And I can't believe I predicted this. It's so funny how mob boss, I mean CEO of Take 2, Strauss Selnick, made fun of Cyberpunk for being a broken mess. Man, how poorly that aged. Surprisingly though, Rockstar released an apology probably because take 2 stock prices were going down. And they stated that anyone who owns the Definitive Edition will get the originals for free. And soon, the original trilogy of games will be back on stores. But get this, only as a bundle, and only on the Rockstar Games launcher. So if you own GTA 3 and Vice City physically or on another launcher, you're probably going to have to pay for all three games again just for San Andreas on a broken launcher. Fuck you, Rockstar. I see cleverly through your deception. You're only doing this for max profit. One more thing before I proceed. Take-Two has decided to put a patent on words. I'm not kidding. These are simple words like Rockstar and Bully, which are everyday common words. And they also claim that the game It Takes Two is using their likeness. Get out of here. Who the hell would use your likeness, you fucking crooks? Wait a minute, by this impeccable logic, since the song It Takes Two was released in 1988 and your company was founded in 1993, shouldn't Rob Bass be able to sue you guys? Before I get to the top three, I just gotta say two things to everyone watching. Always archive your mods because you'll never know when they'll be taken offline. And always remember that Take-Two Interactive is a satanic mafia organization. Alright, finally, let's get to... Number 3, Chris Chan. Taking the bronze medal is Good God, 
fucking Chris Chan. In case you don't know who Chris Chan is, Chris Chan is someone with autism who, since the early 2000s, has been made fun of and gained a following all over the internet. Chris Chan is most known for the creation of Sonic Chew. I've known about Chris Chan since 2016, and one of the things I remember was when Chris Chan was looking for a boyfriend-free girlfriend and formerly he laid down three rules. The girl had to be 18 to 24, not a drinker or a smoker. And I can't really mention the third rule. Look it up for yourself. But anyways, Chris Chan is on this list for, I don't even want to say it. Chris Chan fucked her own mother who has dementia. Yeah. To give the short story, what happened was that Chris Chan admitted these atrocities to a girl over a Discord call, I believe. And let me just say, the girl who exposed Chris Chan for this is not right in the head either. If you want to know how much of a fucking psychopath she is, then watch Turkey Tom's video on it. Anyways, after the news broke out, Chris Chan got arrested by the police for this. This then broke to the mainstream media. Never I thought would I see Tucker Carlson cover fucking Chris Chan. But yeah, Chris Chan, good God. All right, let's talk about number two, Activision Blizzard. And taking the silver medal is another satanic gaming company. Activision Blizzard, they're on this list because of a massive scandal that happened this year. Many women who work at Activision Blizzard reported sexual harassment that occurred. This story is so big that even the state of California is suing them. The harassment has been going on for so many years. Even mainstream game journalists knew about it and didn't care to say a word until an opportune time to gain clout from it. And once again, like every other company, Activision puts on this inclusive, all-progressive company facade for profit. But behind the curtains, they are scum. It's even alleged that Activision CEO Bobby Kotick threatened to kill someone if they were to spill the beans on the sexual harassment. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Did you know that Bobby Kotick was in Jeffrey Epstein's Black Book? You know? I have a theory that Satan himself runs a vast majority of the gaming industry as a shadow ruler, and that the CEOs are his minions. But back on topic, employees were rightfully protesting and going on strike until conditions were met. And much like the Mafia, Activision attempted to bust this union by threatening their jobs. Yeah, y'all think that the Mafia is no longer a thing? but they just became corporatized. One more thing I find funny is how PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo say that they condemn Activision. If that's the case, then why don't you delist their games and stop making them and you money, you greedy virtue signaling motherfuckers. I'm done talking about this. Can I get a drum roll please for number one? Number one. EDP! And of course, taking the number one L of 2021 is EDP 445. I bet most of you were expecting this. EDP is on this list for being exposed as a pedophile. Well, I take that back. He was exposed for being a pedo last year. Flashback time. Last year, Instagram DMs of EDP being a creep towards underage girls were leaked. At first, no one believed them, myself included, because they were only screenshots, and screenshots can be easily faked. But it wasn't until later that year when a person named Cold Raven exposed EDP for being a creep. Instead of showing screenshots, he instead screen recorded and recorded the phone he used to talk to EDP. He pretended to be a teenage girl in hopes of exposing this predator, and he did just that. This is when I knew that EDP was a pedo, but EDP decided to deny these allegations and his dumbass fanbase ate it up. 
Okay, back to this year. Early this year, a predator catching group known as Predator Poachers and a man named CC Unit did a joint sting operation to confront EDP. One of the members of Predator Poachers pretended to be a 13 year old girl. EDP is so fucking disgusting that he sent pictures of his own shit to the decoy. It wasn't until April of this year when EDP and Predator Poachers along with CC Unit confronted one another. And this is the funniest thing. When they asked EDP what he was doing there, his excuse was, Well, I just came here to pick up a cupcake and go all the way back home. Good God, dude. You're telling me that you drove all the way over there to get a cupcake. Get out of here. If you want to watch the whole video, then search it up on archive.org. It's just funny as hell watching him bawl his eyes out when they threaten to call the cops. After this video was released, EDP's channel was terminated from YouTube, along with Chet Goldstein's channel, who is this dude here for ban evading. And you know the thing that sucks is that EDP is not going to jail at all. This is because predator poachers didn't properly work with law enforcement since they're a bunch of grifters who care more about money and views rather than the safety of children. Yeah, did you know that out of the 300 or so predators they confronted, only 10 of them got arrested? After EDP got his YouTube banned, he started posting to his Facebook and Instagram and didn't at all address the allegations. In fact, I don't think he feels guilty at all. Actually, I know he doesn't care because here he is eating cupcakes. Those of course got banned as well. You know, it's a real shame. I was a fan of this guy and even defended him when his channel got banned back in 2018. It's a stab in the heart. He even tried to start up his own website and upload it to some platform called 3Speak. His website never saw the light of day and 3Speak banned his account. Though he'll never face jail time, from what I heard, EDP got evicted and is now homeless. And he was also seen at McDonald's. I just love this comment here and that is why ED UAP takes the number one L of 2021. So this was the top 10 L's of 2021. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments below. I wish you all a happy new year. Stay safe and have a blessed 2022. Alright, peace out.